Welcome. If you've ever thrown your computer out of the window and ripped your dick instantly and cried for three hours later after looking at this specific page, which is the Tripwire wiki page for servers for the new Killing Floor 2, then you've come to the right place, my friend. I am here to comfort you and to make you feel better and to get that fucking server set up and get you playing. So here we go. Strap on some belts because your pants are going to be flying off by, from the excitement. <laughs> you want to get started by port forwarding the ports that the server will need to run. The ports that you need to port forward are listed on the server uh, page from Tripwire, which I will put a link to in the description below, and are these four right here, 777, 27015, 8080, and 2560. Don't ask what all these magical numbers do, just port forward them and everything will be fine. So how do you port forward? Very good question. You will have to access your router, which if you have done already, then you know its address and you know how to do so. If you haven't, this is the easiest way to find out how uh, to access your router or what address your router is under. You want to open up a CMD window which you do by, here I'll show you. If you're in Windows 8, you're just gonna look for it, just type in, or Windows 7, just literally search for CMD, click on command prompt, open it up, and type in ipconfig in here. Once you click enter, it will show you a bunch of gibberish, but the only two things we will care about are your default gateway, 192.168.1.1, which, if you haven't messed about with your router settings, will be what you will type in your browser window to access it. And your IPv4 address, which is your local address, which you also need to keep in mind and write it down, as you will be using it to set up your port forwarding. 192.168.1.109 in my case. Great. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and log into your router and you're going to want to look for something that says forwarding, port forwarding, virtual servers, port triggering, it has a bunch of names. Once you've found this area of your router's menu, go ahead and start adding one by one the ports that you need to port forward. I'll show you the 7777 one as an example. So just so you know, my router is a TP-Link. TLR600 VPN, just in case you have the same one. You're going to want to click on Add New. The service port in this case will be 7777. The internal port you don't need to worry about. This is other technical stuff that I don't even know what it's for. Just leave it blank. The IP address will be your own computer's IP address that we found out earlier. Uh, through the command prompt. So 192.168.1.109 for me. And then the protocol you're going to want to use is either UDP for this, this specific port, but preferably leave it on all. So it doesn't give you problems for sure. Once you've done these simple steps, you can save it. I'm just going to click on back as I already have these configured. And repeat the process for all the other ports. Once you've port forwarded correctly, you can exit your router's configuration window and we can go on to actually looking up your public IP address. This is another thing you're going to want to write down just so you have it before we even start to think about installing the server. And this will be the address that you will give out to your friends so that they can connect from outside your local area network. The way you're gonna find this out is by typing what's my IP in Google and pressing enter. I'm not gonna press enter, otherwise you guys are gonna see my IP and hack into my nudes, which I absolutely do not want to because they're public anyways, just go on Reddit, you'll find them there. Once you find out your public IP address and you've written that down, we can go ahead and start the installation. Go back to the Tripwire wiki and click under downloading and running the Steam CMD update tool. Click on the Windows installer. This will update a zip file. I mean, download a zip file, which you want to open and copy the contents over 
to a folder of your choice under your C drive. I would recommend making a new folder called Steam CMD, as this is what it is. Pasting it in there, and then just starting it. This will download the actual Steam CMD software. Once it says loading Steam API and OK, you're all set to go. Now, the first thing you want to do in here is log in anonymously. So type in login anonymous because we don't want creepy Steam people and Lord Gaben to find out what we're doing. Shh. And once you're logged in and it says waiting for license info OK and then that you're logged in OK, you can start telling this CMD from Steam where you want to install your server. So you're going to write this. You're going to force install dir directory and in our case just for simplicity's sake we're just going to put it under the c drive under a new folder called kf2 server you're going to hit enter and then you're going to want to type up update 232130 validate now as a side note you're going to type validate in only the first time you install this. The way you update the server is you literally repeat the steps we just did once you have it up and running and just type app update 232130 without the validate and it will update it for you. Just press on enter. It will start downloading the server software, which might take a while as it is three gigs and I will be back once I'm done downloading it. Welcome back, I'm done downloading all the files. Once you are done, you should see success app 2130 or 23 2130 fully installed. That means it has fully installed. And to quit this Steam CMD, please do not hit the X. Just type in quit and enter. Uh, not quite, quit. There we go. Now you're going to want to go to the folder you've just created, which is KF2 server under your C drive, open that. And you're going to want to edit the KF2 server.bat file. So right click on it, click on edit. And what you're going to want to do is delete this admin password and the question mark that the default settings put in because we're not going to need that for now. We're going to do it through other config files. Don't touch anything else. Close this and save it. Now you can start your server for the first time. This is going to create all the config files that we're going to use right now to set up your server. Once it's done initializing the game engine, you can close it and go into KF game config and the file you're going to want to be modifying is the PC server KF game. So again, right click and edit this file. The first thing we're going to do is set up an admin password for a web interface that I'm going to make a video on in the future. This web interface will basically allow you to modify all the settings of the game, the difficulty, the map rotation, all in a really nice user interface. And this will be the password for you to access that. So we're going to just set a random password for this. And a game password will be the password that you will use to protect your server from unwanted visitors. If you leave this blank, your server will be open to anyone. If you put in a password, then only your friends or whoever has this password will be able to access it. The next thing we want to modify is if you scroll at the bottom, you're going to find something called engine game replication info. Here you can give your server a super awesome name such as KF2 super awesome sauce server 5000. And since my name is super long, the short name is required, <laughs> which could be something like KF2 5000. Once you're done putting in your two different names, 
You can go ahead, close this window and save this, uh, this config file. Once you've done that, go back to your main folder and start your server. It's gonna show a bunch of text. You're gonna see a couple of warnings sometimes, which is okay. And you're gonna notice that once we start the server, it will say that somewhere in here, your web server is not enabled. Now I cannot see where it says that, but trust me, it does. Somewhere here, web server is not enabled. So what we're gonna wanna do now is go back into KF game and the config files and find the KF web file and set this field as true, which will enable our web server, which I'll show you in a future video. Now, if you start your server, you should be all set. It should say that your web server is running. So somewhere in here, web server created, which is awesome. It should say initializing game engine completed. And it has to say for this to work even locally, Steam game server UID some number. If this doesn't pop up, it's probably because you either have some kind of problem in your config files that you mistyped or the main reason should be that you are not port forwarding correctly in the next video i'm going to show you how to log into the web interface of the server and how to make all the changes you you would need to make such as the game password how to add more custom maps and how to change the rotation of the maps etc etc I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that it has taken out a bit of dick ripping from the experience of getting a server up and running. Again, if you have any questions, please leave them below. I'll try and answer them as, as well as I can. I found that a really great source of help is the KF2 Reddit sub, uh, the KF2 subreddit and also the KF2 forums have a lot of great moderators and people who will help you out but if i can help you out i totally will until next time have a great day and a great night if it's night there see you later